Have you ever wondered what makes bodies tick? Are you creating the sexual reality you desire and require? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? What if your fantasies are not as strange as you thought they were? What if you could learn to be kinder to your body and kinder to others' bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life, or lack of it, affected other areas of your life? Have you lost your mojo and wondered where to find it? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, Body Whisperer, Melitza Yelenich. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone. I'm so glad to have you guys here tonight. Um, for those of you listening live, you'll probably notice that, um, as I was just talking to Keisha, my producer and friend, um, about the weather is like so hot right now. I don't know where you're living in the world, but in pretty much all of North America, we're experiencing super heat and lots of drought. I think we're getting like five seconds of rain actually was talking about this a bit um, with my mom too and uh, the funny thing is it's like I think what's going on is you know we just need more people out there getting themselves wet you know like ladies get wet guys you know I don't know I think there's something there's something we could contribute to the earth maybe get things going so for all of you who aren't choosing that and you're choosing dry vaginas instead um, maybe that's part of what's going on with the Earth. I'm not sure. Ask, you know, what what if your body could be a contribution to the Earth getting a little wetter? Because I'm all for that. So, uh, okay, that was a total side note. <laughs> so thank you for joining me, guys. And uh, for those of you who are brand new to the show and that just scared you away, congratulations. You don't even hear this part. But if you are brand new and you'd like to hear more, thanks for staying. Um, my name is Milita Yelenich, and what I do for a, a living and a livelihood and for fun and joy is that I work with bodies. I work with people, but I mostly work with their bodies, and I work with their energy, whether they know it or not, half the time. Um, so what I do is actually manipulate bodies by movement um, through energy work and through movement to create more ease in bodies. You know, what the heck does that mean? It's like, have you ever gone to... Um, say a yoga class and you walked out and you felt like really great your body felt like it was at ease you know a lot of stuff got dumped out of your brain that you were concerned about it's kind of like that but I'm doing it and facilitating it for you so you get to just lie back and relax and don't have to hold poses so if that sounds kind of intriguing and interesting you can always contact me. I work out of different locations and I find myself all over the place. So I'd love to come and see you, visit you, wherever you are in the world. I love traveling. So that is like, if you'd like somewhere, let me know. I'd love to show up. So um, a lot of other things I do um, stem from my curiosity of what I've been doing most of my life, which is like watching people watching their bodies, watching people, and um, most of my life, actually, I didn't really know that I even liked people until I found out a few years ago that I actually care so much about humanity that I just didn't like what they were doing to themselves and each other. So that might be a little true for all you guys, too. So one of the things, too, that kind of I, I do like about people is I do like their bodies, and I do like touch, and I do like all things like that. So what um, what I like to invite you to through this show is having a lot more fun with your body a lot more ease with your body and this particular episode is just a whole lot of fun crazy facts that I found um, on a bunch of different sites and I just thought they were funny and sometimes every once in a while you know we can get really deep and serious about life and even deep and serious about sex like it's a very important to have that stellar orgasm and you know my daughter keeps asking me, what does stellar mean? I'm like, it's fantastic, like the stars. And she's like, um, mommy, it can get even better than that. And I'm like, okay, cool. So how's it get any better than stellar? She's confused by why I would use that as like the ultimate. So <laughs> I, I get it. She's cool. She probably is more aware about that than I am. Uh, in fact, I know she is. So um, what I, you know, kind of was curious about, and one of the things I kind of like went to search for is, something weird I actually think I typed into Google weird sex uh, or weird sex stuff or something and and I got like these fun facts and I was like oh my god that's so fun 
how cool is that? And some of them are so weird. They actually inspired some possible future episodes um, because I haven't, after two years, I don't think I've actually talked about contraception. So I will be talking about that in a next future episode, history of contraception, modern contraception, energetic contraception, uh, you know, consciousness as a contraception, unconsciousness as a lack of contraception, all that stuff. So I will be talking contraception <laughs> probably uh, in a few weeks because I have a guest for the next episode. So for this week, um, I'm thrilled to be telling you guys ridiculous fun facts that I have found all over the Internet. So one of the ones, if you did look on the show posting, um, you might have noticed that the thing that I posted as a question was, did you know that most women can actually achieve uh, an orgasm through clitoral stimulation in four minutes? And I know that to be personally true because... I know and sometimes you know you've got like a window of time and you're like you know it's you know some people go for cigarette breaks I go for masturbation breaks and I think it takes about as long I don't know because I haven't really smoked enough cigarettes in my life I think I've smoked under 10 cigarettes in my whole life I think it takes so about as long to smoke a cigarette as it does to stimulate your clitoris right so have a little quickie with yourself um why not right it sometimes just brightens your day. Sometimes it actually just gives you a lot more ease to go do whatever else you wanted to do. I'm all for masturbation breaks. Um, you know, if you require it, you know, before you even get up in the morning. Again, like I rarely have coffee, like maybe once a month, maybe twice. So sometimes for me, my wake up in the morning is like, okay, masturbate, go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, have a bath, uh, whatever, uh, get dressed. There you go. There's my day. So uh, oftentimes masturbation is like what leads into my day. And again, it is like four minutes, right? So for those of you who are like, I don't even have time to masturbate. Ugh, who has time? Four minutes, ladies. Don't tell me that you cannot stimulate yourself for four minutes because I know you can. And if you're really that stressed, it's like, you know what? Maybe there's something else going on. So if there is really something else going on, and if you have really never even tried, um, give it four minutes and see what comes up. What the same research indicates is that stimulation, like vaginal stimulation, takes between 10 and 20 minutes on average to achieve orgasm. Uh, personally, for me, it's it's actually longer, I think. Um, I'm not sure why, but then as I did some other fun fact um, finding, I I kind of get that I fall into a different category, different for you know different number of things. So one of the other fun facts that I found was about women's vaginas, and I know that all of you know, or I hope all of you know something about physiology, that women's vaginas are stretchy. Everybody knows that. Wow, some of you don't. Okay, cool. Women's vaginas are stretchy. They stretch in actually all directions. They stretch long and they stretch wide. They're kind of like a penis that way. So when women are aroused, they their vaginas will actually stretch open and they'll stretch lengthwise. So what I'm kind of wondering, because I was told once by a midwife that I have an extra long vagina, um, is perhaps maybe my spots are in a little different area because the ratio is a little different maybe i'm not sure but anyway whatever it is um i have fun trying is what i'm saying and it's all good so hey maybe it's not 10 minutes or 20 minutes and and maybe for you um you know stimulating your clitoris for four minutes is not long enough and you know what i've had those days where it's just like there's just like so much stuff going on in my life where it's like, no, it's not actually four minutes. So fun fact, you're incorrect on some occasions because sometimes I swear it's been like an hour and I'm like then stressed, like, oh my God, this is getting frustrating. This is getting annoying. What, what do I need to like put my energy into so that I can actually, and then usually what it comes down to is I just need to I require myself to actually expand, receive, expand, receive, expand, receive, expand, receive, because I'm in such a contractive mode and trying so, like the trying is actually destroying everything that I am like 
asking for. So the trauma is making it really, really hard. I'm like, come on, body, come on, body. It's like so stressful. So, so instead of stressing yourself out with this, like just go. What if you could just do it for four minutes for fun? I know that my friends from OM, the orgasmic meditation people from One Taste um, in the U.S., uh, are big fans of 15 minutes of clitoral stimulation. So, you know, four minutes, 15 minutes, neither one is right or wrong. Um, we, you know, what one person's research says as four minutes doesn't make that, you know, the God's word or whatever, or the goddess's word. And 15 minutes uh, also does not make that the goddess's word. So what's fun for you? Please choose that. You know, if one hour is fun for you, choose it. If you're getting stressed out like I have on occasion, maybe take your hands away for a minute, expand, <laughs> breathe, you know, um, redirect your energy, expand again, <laughs> maybe that'll help. And then uh, allow yourself to receive because that could be fun, right? Because sometimes you're not even willing to receive from yourself. How freaking cute are we? Uh, well, at least I'm like that. I can at least say that for myself. So yeah, masturbation. How fun is that? It's clitoral stimulation, masturbation, good times. So another one, um, and, and this was true for me too. Like I'm telling you most of the ones that are true for me. So one of the other ones is most women lose their virginity between the ages of 15 and 19, but they actually wish they'd waited longer. Additionally, most teenagers lose their virginity by 17, but those who have not lost their virginity by 24 tend to stay a virgin. Now I thought that was interesting, um, because I do have friends who are virgins, um, and they're older and I do have friends who when we were in high school were all like oh yeah sex whatever it was like we were like some of them were like 15 16 younger uh, I was 17 so I think like a lot of um, you know a lot of if you just took the averages between you know your friends who are 15 and your friends who are 19, you'd get that average age of 17 I actually have to say I don't really care if I had waited longer or not. It wasn't super significant to me. It was pretty much about as significant as, say, I don't know, going for a walk to the mall. It was really like, okay, cool. Um, sure, let's do this. Works for Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show, with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. What if there are no dumb questions, or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. 
You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Pleasure Zone. Sorry I dropped out of the ethers there for a second. That's always confusing. I'm like, what just happened? So we're back, we're back, we're back. I think the last thing I was talking about was virginity um, being 17. And, you know, I think that was good with that point. Maybe that was the universe's way of going, move on with it, lady. Let's talk about something more interesting. So there you go. I will. Um, I find strange things interesting. So one of the strange things that I find interesting is, I don't know if you knew this, but I did not know this till I did research, is that if a female ferret does not have sex for a year, she will die. So for all of you out there who think, oh, my God, I haven't had sex in a long time and I'm going to die, just ask yourself, hmm, have I been a ferret in another lifetime? So if you have been a ferret in another lifetime, you might want to clear all the energy around being a ferret, and you know, if, especially if you were a female ferret and you would die in a year. Uh, you know, all the lifetimes where you've been the female ferret and died for not having sex for a year, you can just destroy and uncreate all that times a godzillion. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, puddle, nine, shorts, boys, and beyond. What is that crazy talk? If you want to know more about that crazy thing I just said, you can go to access, sorry, theclearingstatement.com. It's from Access Consciousness. Just a fun way to clear energy. Um, and the funny thing is, is like some of you out there that are listening, I do get, wow, you actually were ferrets and you did die for not having sex for a year. How very interesting, crazy and wild. (laughs) How does it get any more bizarre than that, right? So I'm just really grateful that in this lifetime that's not true for me uh, because, you know, I did do like a a sort of austerity and a celibacy for like four years. I would have been dead. Um, I have a few friends that would be dead. So, you know, and that would also include like children, I would think. Like you'd have to have sex within the first year of your life. Crazy times, like that's wild. So, yeah, so glad that's not the truth. Now, um, another one that I really like of the points that I found was that, and I know this is true, but I actually know this is more true for like my friends out there who are more, I don't know if you've ever read Dane Here's Being You book. I think you might have just heard his ad. Um, his Being You book is amazing, and in it he describes two kinds of uh, beings on the planet. One is like a horse, and one is like a cow. And the cows kind of just graze in fields all day long, kind of eat, chew their cud, blah, 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 and then wait for slaughter. And horses run around, jump, play, rub bodies, have sex, run around, jump, play, work hard, you know, have sex, and work hard, and rub bodies. And so... I think this particular fact that comes up is actually more related to uh, the the people who are more like horses. So it says some people are wired to have more sex than others. And I think it's my horse friends out there that are more wired for it than others. And they're actually saying scientists are not sure why that is, but it is true for both male and females um, that some, some males and females want more sex and some want less. Um, they don't even know how the brain is wired for that or why the brain is wired for that. But my information on that and my awareness on that is it's because you're a horse person and not a cow. Not that one's right or wrong. They're just different. So this is another fun fact, that during intercourse, your nose swells just as your breasts and genitals will. Now, I actually know that because when on so many occasions and since I can remember, is when I'm super turned on, my nose will actually like secrete um, like snot. It's so attractive. It's like any guy who can get through that part of it is like, whoa, her nose is runny. It's best I'm like lying back on my, instead of like, you know, on top riding position because I have to have Kleenexes beside me. So I can like wipe my nose in the middle of my like, my riding skills because I know it's really cute. Like you just look up and your woman's there, her boobs are moving, and her ass is, like, going, and you're touching her, and all of a sudden, snot's running down her fi- face. It's, like, so attractive, right? So I- I'm sure to keep Kleenexes close by. It's not for wiping up cum later. It's for my nose. Just saying. <clears throat> so having that fact that your nose swells um, makes me feel so much better about my body than thinking I'm a freak. So... Because, you know, most of my life I'm like, just fair warning, you know, when I come, by the way, when I'm really turned on, my nose drips. It also happens when I eat and it happens when I laugh. Uh, my nose is kind of chronic, so there you go. And 
uh, I don't even know how or why, but I just know that that's what goes on. So there you go. So um, there were some facts about penises that I, th- I get that we all kind of already know. So none of those were like new shockers to me that the average penis is between five and seven inches. None of that was like... I'm like, yeah, whatever. But there's actually more facts about penises. Like the average North American Western penis is between five and seven inches. The average Asian penis is between three and five inches. And the average um, like African penis is like, I think, six to eight inches or seven to nine inches or something. Um, but what is that based on anyway? Because, you know, I've been, I've seen it all. I've seen the range. I've, I've technically now seen the range. So there you go. Um, Now, this fact I did like, and I actually have a friend who has like a Fitbit, and she was, she's been doing a lot of walking, and in her walking, she had um, burned like a certain number of calories walking in a day, and then when she had sex, she had like the same spike with walking 10 kilometers as she did with having an orgasm, and I was like, that's cool, so this fact is about burning calories, and it says that for men, men burn between 100 and 200 calories on average with sex, uh, while women only burn 69. Now, I thought approximately 69. I just like that they wrote approximately 69. They could have said approximately 70, but we had to use the magic number. So approximately 69 calories. So we actually, as women, have to have three times more sex to make up for those calories. That could mean three times more lovers or three times more masturbation or, you know, who knows what that could equal. So many ways, just, you know, because we definitely want to catch up, right? It's a competition, right? Of course it is. So now there was a bit of really weird, funny information Um, But I do like, I I got some information on sperm because, you know, it's fun. So did you know, and I know that most of you do know this, for the average man when he um, ejaculates, there's, you know, millions of sperm that come out. But did you know that there's enough sperm in one man to impregnate every woman on the entire planet who is fertile? crazy times that's a lot a lot of sperm but the other cool thing about sperm is that and i want to just get my numbers accurate here so i'm going to go find that bit of information that sperm contains i think it's 37.5 megabytes each sperm contains 37.5 megabytes of information so it's like the you get all those sperm together they would they could actually if we use them to store information, could store more information than some of the supercomputers of the world. Like one man's sperm could actually hold probably more information than the supercomputers of the world. Here's another interesting and semi-disgusting, um, only disgusting because it's a point of view, but it's funny at the same time, um, is that in during World War One or Two, I've got to find that accurate information. I think it was World War One. Um, anyway, I'm going to go with this. During one of the world wars, uh, men actually used their sperm to make it into a invisible ink. But what they started to realize is that when it dried, it really stank. So they stopped doing that. It was World War One. It was members of the British Secret Intelligence Service, MI6, discovered that they could use their semen as invisible ink. Isn't that fascinating? So another fun fact for men about their sperm, because sperm is so fascinating and just it's cute and tiny, and it's like, hey, let's talk more about it, because I like to, and why not? So another fun fact about sperm is that semen can cure depression. Now, I don't know if that means that you need to eat it, rub it on your face. It didn't actually give the full uh, lowdown on this, but I'm getting swallow it. Men and ladies and gentlemen, swallow sperm because, you know what, it's going to help with depression. I think it's better than some of, you know, uh, whatever those drugs are out there for depression. I I know there's a lot of top name ones. Don't remember their names. I've never taken them. So why? Because I use sperm. That's what I use. So who needs, you know, medication when you've got sperm? Apparently, semen contains chemicals that elevate mood increase affection, and induce sleep. It can also contain, um, it also does contain cortisol, which is known to increase feelings of affection in the brain. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. 
So also, another thing about uh, ejaculation, not so much about the sperm itself, but about ejaculation, is that a man can technically be brain dead as long as his spinal system, spinal cord's working, he can ejaculate because the order to ejaculate in the body actually comes from the spine. Who knew? Although there is a lot of research out there for for women um, that women can uh, give themselves an orgasm through their brain, and there there was a woman uh, who was used um, in research for that, and she proved that just with thought she could have the same response in her brain as an orgasm, and in fact hers was even stronger than the average woman's orgasm. I don't remember where I found that information. I saw it in a movie many years ago, a couple years ago. Um, and now there was some other bits of you know information I liked. It was evolving around oral sex. And one of those pieces of information about oral sex was that people in their 70s and 80s are starting to now um, have way more oral sex than they did before. Um, I think like a lot of that taboo of it is going away. Plus those 70 and 80-year-olds were like in their 20s during the 60s, during the sexual revolution. So we've got you know, people who are far more open to experimenting with stuff. That might not have been the case 20 years ago when those people were just kind of coming out of, you know, growing up during the Depression or something like that, right? So there's a different kind of age group that's that's uh, now, like, having way more fun with oral sex. How's it get any better than that? Yay! Here's another fun and strange fact that wolves, bears, and bats are also known to perform oral sex. I have, you know, I have both wolves, bears, and bats in my you know, in my woods. Um, I know I've got bears because I had one run at me. Um, I think if you guys listen to a show from October of 2015 um, or September, you'll you'll hear my story about the bear. Uh, and, yeah, you know what? Maybe the bear was running because it was like, hey, lady, you're one of those oral sex people and, and you love oral sex. I'm coming to help you out. I don't know. Like, the bear might have just been, like, trying to get friendly now that I know that they have oral sex, they might have just felt like an affinity for me. And that's cool. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's a fun thought. I'm like, hey, we're buddies. We're like comrades in the oral sex world. You never know. Let's go with it just for fun. <clears throat> the the other um, thing is, is like a lot of people say that you need to be um, sort of in good shape to have sex, but it's actually not really totally true that that though cholesterol does seem to have an effect, like lower cholesterol is directly related to a better sex performance in the bedroom. Now, there is also information on, like, people who are more willing to be kinky in the bedroom. Say if you're willing to, like, do the random tying up or do the, you know, whatever, like, um, things over your eyes, like blindfolds or whatever, if you're willing to have a little fun in the bedroom and stop being vanilla, Apparently, that is more psychologically beneficial to you. So how does it get any better than that? The kinky you are, apparently the more psychologically healthy you are. So very fun. Um, They also say that women who are prone to migraines also are more likely to have more sex. Uh, This is because orgasms can help alleviate the pain of a migraine. Actually, um, that was when I first started meditating years ago I had this uh, teacher who often said like if you have a headache go masturbate and orgasm is the best thing to get rid of it and whenever I've had headaches I've been like honey can you please like love her like please like just like will will you just like give it to her give 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 her to her real good for me like just you know whatever I'll bend over and you just give her real good and he's like, no, but you have a headache. I'm like, for the love of God, I need to get rid of my headache. Will you please help? Um, for the longest time, I confused the crap out of him because he was like, no, every other woman is like, no, not tonight, dear. I have a headache. I'm like, please, tonight, dear, I have a headache. Please help me. <laughs> so, you know, everybody's different, but it worked for me. So, And this is also a true fun fact for me, um, so I'm going to bring it up to you. Approximately 1% of women can achieve full orgasm solely through stimulating their breasts. 
I am one of those 1%. Um, and I think it's like a, a lesser known um, fun thing to do is like really if you are willing to um, – explore bodies fully, you can probably find that there are a lot of different places um, that you can achieve orgasm through. So it might not just be the nipples or the breasts, it might be other places that you can bring somebody to an orgasm. And it may not be as rare as we think it is either. It may be way more than that if people were willing to be more vulnerable, be more present in their bodies, um, receive more with their bodies. I think that number of 1% would skyrocket to like 90%. Or more. So I'm going to take a little break now, take a deep breath. I've been, you know, thinking about nipples and four minute orgasms. I think I get like two minutes during this this, uh, commercial break to go stimulate myself and see can I pull this off in two minutes? I'm not sure. Let's find out. So I'm going to take you guys to break. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you some more fun, crazy facts about sex. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show, with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at melitzayelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Jelanić, and tonight I'm talking about weird fun facts about sex. Um, the title of the show is really four minutes. So if uh, those of you who are joining us later in the program, if you want to know what that's all about, just start to listen to the beginning of it. That's one of our first fun facts about stimulation. So another one I've got here is, um, and I'm sure some of you have experienced this too, is that like during... Uh, when your body's aroused and ready for sexual intercourse, you're less likely to be grossed out by anything that happens. So that's a fun fact. Um, so I want to speak to that for a second because I think there are so many times where, um, you know, somebody could suggest to you, oh, like before sex, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on your butt, I'm going to come on your boobs, I'm gonna, and you're like, oh, man. Uh, but then during it, you're like, oh, my God, come on my boobs, come on my butt, like, oh my god yeah like and it's so exciting um and like everything goes and you're like yeah let's dance outside naked oh my god why is that pair being used there but i like it use it okay cool weird things start happening and and things are flying and all of a sudden like everything's going on and there's strange noises from the viewing audience and you're like i don't even know i had a viewing audience but all of a sudden you don't get grossed out by anything um, because you're just so in the moment and so like enjoying all of it. So 
for those of you who um, do find yourself getting grossed out by a lot of things, you might actually want to consider, are you actually turned on at that time? Are you turned on by much of anything? And if you aren't, it's to start to look for something that does arouse you. Um, the beauty of that is that what it actually starts to do is eliminate your point of view about anything and allow you to receive more. So it's not just about sex in the bedroom that you won't be grossed out by anything. It's actually that when you are aroused, not just for sexual intercourse, but when you are aroused, even in your life in general, when you're turned on, turned on by life, turned on by what you're doing and choosing and creating, um, and you're like the walking orgasm, very few things will gross you out. In fact, nothing might gross you out. You might have so very few points of view about anything that um, you receive everything um, with total ease. And, you know, you you might go, okay, I, I don't necessarily choose that, but I'm also not refusing it. So there's a little side note. So here's one. So most of you know, and I actually remember teaching and I'm it's technically it was actually teaching it wasn't like facilitating a bars class or facilitating a body processes or something it was, I was actually teaching a, a class in school um in around 2001 and I was teaching a bunch of grade eights I was teaching sex ed and somehow that year I got put into every sex ed class no teacher was ever showing up to teach sex ed and I was getting called in as the supply teacher to teach sex ed I was totally cool with it because I'd been, you know, reading stuff in university. It was fun to me. Um, it's kind of funny that I'm doing this show now because I was, like, all about doing the education on sex. You know, the, I'd put the penis up on the projector because that's what we had then. We didn't have whiteboards. Put the penis up on the projector of the picture, and guys would be like, oh, yeah, that's, like, my penis, you know, grade eights. So <laughs> I remember one of the questions that came through because uh, I – in one class, I had all girls, and the agreement was if they had done all their homework and everybody showed me their homework, I would field any questions they had for me. Well, you know where that can lead, but one of the top questions was, what is an orgasm, and miss, have you ever had one? <laughs> and I was, so I kind of, you know, deked out on one of those questions because I, I was aware enough that I wasn't supposed to share that information. So the, what I did say was that... Um, an orgasm is a physiological response, and it's an involuntary physiological response. Your body uh, has it. You, it's not something uh, you necessarily want to control or have to control, um, although I kind of have more uh, body capacities that way, but I can do that. Not that you want to, but I remember getting called into the principal's office later for saying this because apparently um, I was not qualified to inform the children, the girls that asked me, I was not qualified to tell them that an orgasm is an involuntary physiological response where with contractions uh, in your vagina. I wasn't allowed to say that. So interesting. I don't know what I was supposed to say. Maybe I was supposed to say, you have to talk to the nurse or something. I don't know. Kind of silly, but there you go. But orgasms, along with sneezes, cannot be voluntarily stopped once they have started because they are physiological responses to whatever's going on. So you can't stop them, even if you want to. I know you can stop a sneeze before it happens, but not during. And, and like, truly, I love sneezing. Like, I love the, even the sound, I just like the, 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 almost the intensity of it is so fun and and I tend to you know wake people up to that way I think I woke my daughter up today sneezing um must be pollen in the air or something who knows what that is it could be entities who knows so many things so here's another fun fact about men and bodies and all kinds of things is that pumpkins might be a male aphrodisiac so Halloween, Thanksgiving, ladies, get your guys some pumpkin pie, make some pumpkin soup, you know, get them some pumpkin seeds, roast those up. What else can you do with pumpkins that you never thought of? Get those boys full of pumpkins and then see what kind of fun you can have because mm, that sounds like fun. According to the Smell and Taste Treatment and Research Foundation of Chicago, the smell of pumpkin can increase blood flow to the penis providing some interesting insight into why men do love Thanksgiving so much. 
So that's a little bit of information on, that I found there. So, um, and this one I did know about, and I don't think I ever brought it up on one of my shows, but um, it, it, it is actually what reminded me that I could do a show on on uh, contraception. Interesting fun fact from the past that crocodile dung used to be used as contraception. I think just the smell of it would make a person want to go away. So I'm thinking that that in itself is like contraception because who wants to be near it? And B, oh my God, who wants to put that on their penis, stick it in a vagina? What kind of freaking bacterial infections are you going to get? I'm just like, I saw that and I was like, damn. Uh, I just like make sure I don't even get my own poop in there. Like, I'm just thinking like, why would you stick crocodile poop in there? And and if it's not going in your vagina or on a penis, does that mean you're eating it? Holy God, people do interesting, funny things. But ancient Egyptian women used crocodile dung as contraception. Uh, apparently, the poop is slightly alkaline, so it might have worked as a spermicide. Uh, I think it was really about getting them out of the way. So, blech, gross. There is a, another fun fact. Do you like how I'm using another fun fact as all my lead-ins? Because, uh, really, guys, I haven't come up with anything else yet. So, so uh, I get this one is totally true. Your sex life might affect your wages. So it's like the more sex you have. So... Those who had sex four more times a week earned significantly more than those who didn't. So I'm just saying, if you're complaining that your husband's not bringing home enough money, if you feel like you're not bringing home enough money for your own self, if you know if you're having a lover's fight about money, um, consider increasing the sex in your life. This was actually a bunch of information gathered um, by the. Anglia Ruskin University um, is a study in about Greek households and their finances. Now, I don't know if this research was done before the economic collapse in Greece or after the economic collapse in Greece. Either way, I like the information, so I'm going to go with the point of view that the more sex I have, the more money is going to show up. For me, it's really all about receiving, so uh, it technically makes sense to me that the more you're willing to receive, whether it's in the bedroom or whether it's at work, the more you're willing to receive in general, the more can actually show up. So uh, for people who are having sex two or three times a day, um, whether they're like never going to work because they're financially so well off that they don't have to, or you know they're doing it so efficiently that they're doing other things so efficiently that they have so much money coming in that woohoo. Um, and maybe you're just doing it two times a day because you can, like morning and night, because maybe you work from home, like some of us do. So, hey, whatever works, right? Um, now, here's one for penises. There's a lot of information on penises. Um, I don't know, and I was going to look up some more, and I just ran out of time, but ancient Greece actually had a penis curse, and they discovered it uh, on a Greek island when they were doing some, like, uh, excavations, and there was a curse that was inscribed on a tablet, on a lead tablet, that read, may your penis hurt when you make love. So Serbians have, like, a lot of crazy swearing. Like, uh, even if I said this stuff, it wouldn't make sense to half of you, but I'll translate some of them. Like, one of them w is so, like, like, may you make love to your neighbor's dog. It's kind of like there's, for some reason, a lot of these European cultures used uh, anything that would harm the penis, um, make fun of the penis. Those things were all going to be used uh, as uh, not just curses, but um, like curse words or ways to like hurt a person because, you know, your penis is your life. It's your pride. This one is one that I actually was not aware of, um, but hey, it's great, and for all the men out there who fall into this category, this one's for you. Overweight men last longer in the bedroom. So everywhere that you guys think you're overweight and you're putting yourself down for it, you know, what if it's a bonus in the bedroom? A 2010 Turkish study looked into the average performance times of men over the course of a year, and researchers found that overweight men lasted almost three times as long in the bedroom. Isn't that awesome? So next time, ladies out there who are judging men who you think are too big or whatever, 
it's not like a perfect body type or whatever you have as a point of view that's so not even remotely true. Ask those bodies, body, will you be fun? Because you know what? Chances are you're missing out if you haven't actually tried that. So um, overweight men are having sex for three times longer. Woohoo! That's awesome. I'm going to go feed my husband until he gets like 400 pounds, and then woohoo, it's going to be great. I think this is why he's been like, here, here, darling, do you want some chips tonight? And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like thinking my, well, I know that he wants my ass to grow because he's all about big asses. So I think this is like his, his like program for me to have like a really big bum so that he can just enjoy it more. But I can get him a little fatter and then, you know, it's going to be great. It, it, all in all, it works out for all of us and we get chips too. How's it getting any better than that? So. Here's another one. Did you know, and I actually have a friend that this happened to, um, 33% of Americans, but my friend's Canadian, got injured during sex. Um, and this particular friend actually got injured during sex, like on her birth- birthday, I think it was, and she was doing something crazy, and she has like this massive posters, uh, poster bed or something, and she was describing it to me, and somehow or other, She's like twisted her leg or she twisted her arm, but anyway, luckily for her, I, I could put her back into into place. So, whew, she was good. Um, but it was the first person I'd actually ever had show up in my office and admit that they had a sex injury that I needed to to work on. I was so proud of her. <laughs> so I have had my own sex injuries um, when I first started dating my now uh, lover husband. I I remember like. I, I don't know, we were, like, going out at, like, rabbits for a few hours because, you know, we had time then to do that. And um, at some point, I, like, I really love holding testicles when I'm, like, you know, in the doggy position, I like, like, reaching back and holding testicles. I just like holding them because it's comforting for me. So I was, like, reaching back, and, and then I was holding his testicles, but I was trying not to, like, be... Um, harsh, like I was trying not to like pull. So if he moved back, I moved back too. But I overstretched my arm, and I literally pulled my arm, like it was not. And it was like after that, I was like, oh man. And luckily, my mom knows how to put my shoulder back in, and they couldn't quite explain. I was like, I think I just stretched weird. I don't know what I did. I literally lost mobility in that arm for like three days. I had to have my mom work on it every day until it got back to working position. <laughs> so. People have, like, sprained feet, broken their legs. Um, If you have, congratulations, because 33% of Americans have, too. Maybe less Canadians, because we're just a little different, and probably no Australians, because they're just, like, they're from down under and do everything backwards anyway. So, (laughs) to all my Australian friends. So, here's here's one that I have not done, but... um, well, technically, I work at home, so I guess I have done this. In a survey of over a thousand people, ten percent of people admitted to having sex at work. I have um, a number of people who have admitted to me that they have done that, and it blows my mind that we're in this like day and age of video cameras and everything else, um, and people are like choosing to do this, uh, fully well knowing that they could totally get caught, um, which again, is like mind-blowing to me that you would choose this. You could be caught. These video videos sometimes get, you know, aired on things like social media. So, wow. Um, interesting choice, guys, if you are choosing to do that at work. Um, if you do want to be put all over social media, congratulations. You probably will be. If you don't want to put be put all over social media, you might want to consider where you're doing this. You know, supply closets are definitely going to have cameras in them because they don't want people stealing stuff. The photocopy room, even the gym, in case somebody gets injured, will have um, cameras in it. It's more for safety. They're not really looking to, like, well, maybe they are looking to watch you guys have sex because maybe they know people do that there. Um, I think they can't put them in bathroom stalls, so I think you're good there, but they probably can put them, you know, in front of the mirrors of the bathrooms, like where the sinks are. So it's just like seriously look around, see if there's cameras before you choose that if you don't want to be on film and have it publicized to the world. Okay, good. Um, what else do I have for you guys? Oh, I know I have lots and I'm just like talking like crazy. So 
according to, um, I guess, geologists, not geologists, but maybe uh, people have been doing excavations, and I don't know where these bodies were found, but before Neanderthals, uh, before Neanderthals period, um, by whatever was before the Neanderthal, the evolution from uh, Neanderthal to us, but whatever was before the Neanderthal, those penises actually had spines in them, but so far researchers don't actually know why. So maybe it just made it a little more fun. It would make it look longer. I'm not really sure how that would work for them. I know there are some animals that do have something like that going on, um, but for the most part, not so much. Mostly it's just uh, a blood thing. So what else do I have for you guys here? Huh. Did you also know that 53% of Western Australia has had a threesome? It's interesting they only did that research in Australia, but nowhere else. Uh, I'm thinking that there are certain parts of if you if you take certain parts of any country where you know um, certain economic standards are higher, I know that there are parts of Toronto where I just recently found out that there are parts of Toronto that are totally known for for swingers. So it's like if you move into that area, people almost assume you're a swinger. There are parts of like Mississauga that are like that. Like, so there's all these parts of Ontario that I'm aware of that, you know, people are considered swingers that live in that area. It's almost like, hey, you live there, you must be a swinger. It's interesting because, um, you know, with 53% of Australians doing threesomes, I wonder how much of a percentage of different cities, if you if you actually looked at like a concentrated area, if they looked at these areas of Toronto where swingers do their thing, um, how many of those, the percentages might be way higher. So, these, you know, everything about facts are all come down to who did they actually talk to, where's the research coming from. So everything on this show that I've been talking about that, you know, if you took it personally, like, oh, my God, I'm not an average. I don't I don't fit that fact or blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't get the orgasm in four minutes, blah, blah, blah. Like, if you're worried about any of that stuff, I bring this stuff up because it makes me laugh. And so... I just think it's really, really funny that that we, you know, um, always look for a way to make ourselves normal when we're not. None of us are normal. So the reason why this stuff is so interesting is because truly none of us are normal, and we're always looking for something interesting to talk about or to um, explore, right? So I am, you know, I'm having, ooh, I'm, I'm like getting sweaty right now, which is exciting. Um and I, you know, a few fun facts that I might be missing or, you know, let me see. If there's anything that I'm missing, I would love to share it with you guys. I don't think there is, but uh, yeah. so, oh, for those of you who are wondering, um, there's another bit of information that grandparents and great-grandparents still do have sex yet. So that 70-year-old, 80-year-old thing with the oral sex um, is is a good indicator that your grandparents are having sex. I think my grandfather would still be having sex if he had a partner. Um, he's like 93. My dad's almost 80. He's dating women all the time. Um, I think one of the things, too, that is not that I didn't find in the fun facts research, but I have heard from health nurses, is that the increase and rise in um, STDs in um, seniors is huge, especially in senior homes, because they're not really thinking about protection. So if there are any seniors listening to my show, guys, be aware. Um, take care of your bodies. Use protection. Have fun. I know you think you're going to die anyway, but please don't spread stuff while you're still alive. I want to thank all of you guys for listening. I'm really grateful for that. It, it just makes the show so much more fun knowing that there's somebody out there listening. Um, if there's ever a topic that you'd like me to talk about, please write in, send me an email on Facebook, uh, connect with me and let me know. Uh, until next week, have an amazing, amazing week. Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Melissa Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain and 5 p.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.